Hey, good morning. Dr. Sean J. Harris here at Generational Wealth Academy. Great morning to everybody. Uh, I want to talk about three things that if you're not careful when making purchases, they can put you in some uh, financial binds. I think the first thing um, is cars. A lot of times we get into car purchases that put us over our head um, in debt or uh, financial obligation. But there's different ways of buying vehicles sometimes. You know, a lot of times we go out and we buy cars uh, for the prestige, uh, maybe the showboat. I remember I had a mentor who told me, said, Sean, so many people go out and buy expensive luxury cars and then they park them in a garage for eight to 12 hours a day while they're at work and they never even get to see the car in the daylight sometimes. But it's like you work, work, work to pay for this car that you really can't afford as opposed to just paying for something um, that's more suitable for your needs and not trying to impress somebody uh, who don't really care if you got money or not. But there are some techniques that I use when purchasing cars. You know, I, don't, I don't purchase new cars anymore. Uh, just understand the depreciation value of cars. So for an example, I had a buddy of mine who wanted to buy a Suburban. This was probably about 15 years ago. But he was going to pay $30,000 for the Suburban from uh, a used car dealership. And the car, only, the truck only came with like a 30-day warranty. So I told him, I said, listen, you can buy a car from an auction for like $13,000 for that exact same Suburban. And I said, worst case scenario, let's say that the uh, engine and the transmission needed to be repaired. Let's say that was another $5,000. So five thousand plus the thirteen thousand uh, that he would pay for the vehicle would have put them right at eighteen thousand, which was right at halfway mark of what he would have paid if he'd paid the thirty-five thousand for the suburban that only had a thirty-day warranty. This way, if he bought it the way I did, he had a, uh, a perfectly good body suburban. It would have had a brand new transmission as well as a brand new engine. That's practically a brand new vehicle. So it's, you had to be smart about making purchases. The next purchase that can get you in trouble financially is a house. Again, a lot of times people want to get houses to impress other people um, that really don't care if you got the money or not. Um, we live in a nice home, it's, it's good for us. Uh, we don't have to have a 32 bedroom uh, apartment, you know, mansion or anything like that. We get to what's suitable for us and our needs. Um, but here's the cool thing too with buying houses. It does not take 30 years to grab a mortgage. There's mathematical formulas that you can use. There's ways that I teach my clients how you can take a 30 year mortgage and pay it off in seven and a half years. You just have to understand numbers. You have to understand amortization charts. Um, how to attack principal versus um, just your interest pretty much on home. So we've been conditioned. I think that it takes 30 years to be off the house and it really doesn't. Uh, and just to give you another example, let's just say you wanted to get a, a lower price home for investing purposes. Well, let's just say you found a home for $60,000. That's the same as buying a car. A nice BMW or Mercedes, $60,000. Well, you can pay off that car in 60 months. Why can't you pay off the house in 60 months? Again, you have to understand the numbers. It's all about the numbers. So, um, there's ways that we teach our clients really how to maximize their home. Uh, instead of renting out a house, only getting like $20 million gross profit, I teach my clients how to uh, generate twelve dollars to $24,000 a month in that same home. They were only going to get $20 uh, million gross profit from just a regular tenant. Um, these are the things we teach. We teach this kind of stuff in Generation one. Today is Thursday morning. Every day is a Saturday to me. So that's why sometimes when I say what day it is, you see I may hesitate sometimes because I'm not caught up on the day of the week really when they're all like Saturdays. Uh, I, I remember being in rush hour traffic. I knew exactly what day it was. I knew exactly what time it was. I, I was wishing away five whole days, Monday through Friday, just to get to the weekend to try to enjoy a day and a half. Uh, which was Saturday and half of Sunday because Sunday by midday you got to start preparing for work Monday. So um, every day is a Saturday for us. But another thing that 
I think hurt people financially is attempting to purchase uh, vacations that are over and above uh, the finances. Again, so many people uh, attempt to travel to all the cool places that everyone else sees. Everyone will post on online. I think right now the biggest one that everybody's still going to send, Tory, Greece. Um, but it's a lot of places in the world to travel. Um, and it's really not that much more to travel outside of the country than it is to travel inside the country if you know how to travel. Um, you guys see my family and I, we travel all the time. We haven't really traveled too much in the last two years uh, because of pandemic restrictions based on where we want to go and the time frames we want to go. Uh, versus those particular countries restrictions and also we've had a lot going on this year uh, in the businesses So it really kind of kept us here locally this last year but one thing with uh, traveling is We maximize our trips if we're gonna go in a particular part of the world like we went to Thailand and Thailand There's so many different countries that's nearby that we can maximize that trip We can split a trip we can spend one part in one city in Thailand and then we spend the other half of our trip in another part of Thailand. So it's like two vacations in one, really. Uh, I think three years ago, I think it was, we rented an island in the Rosario Isles in Colombia. That was an amazing trip. So learn how to how to vacation properly and do it financially intelligent. Um, we would maximize our trip. Sometimes we do all inclusive. Sometimes uh, we haven't taken a cruise in a while, but we enjoy cruising. Um, but there's different parts of the world that, if you understand the finances, you understand how that particular area operates, you can really maximize and save a lot of money. We went to Dubai a few years back. That was an amazing trip. We actually uh, did multiple stops on that trip. We went to Italy, went to Dubai, and then moved on to uh, Thailand. And then we stayed in several places in Thailand. And one thing we've always maximized too whenever we travel, we always make sure we make friends in those particular countries, uh, in those different parts of the world. So pretty much anywhere we travel in the world, we got friends there. Uh, whether it's concierge, service, drivers, uh, chefs, just friends in general. So, uh, Excuse me, those are the three things that, um, as long as you don't pay more money than what's reasonable in purchasing cars, homes, vacations, you'll be okay financially. But if you let it get away from you, it can hurt you. So, those three things I just wanted to kind of talk to you guys about. Um, at Generation Wealth Academy, we teach all this kind of stuff. Um, we teach you how to start kid businesses, how to build uh, wills and trusts how to establish uh, private family banking systems, infinite banking. It's just so much in the world that people can learn. If you just take the time to learn it, that'll make life so much easier for you, especially uh, economically. To be able to get the time and money freedom. Uh, yesterday we had a great pitch competition. I uh, posted it yesterday. Kennedy and Kaden both pitched. Uh, Kennedy won the overall pitch. It was 12 uh, youth entrepreneurs that were pitching for the different ideas. Kennedy took first place and won $1,000. And I did the math on that too. I think so many times we're conditioned to think that we're supposed to work a certain amount of time to make a certain amount of money, uh, basically hourly wages. But what Kennedy did, her uh, pitch was four minutes and 35 seconds. That came out to be $229.88 per minute that she made. Um, given her pitch. So I think her billable rate came to be like $13,700 something dollars. Um, so it's not about how long you do something to make money, it's the skill set or it's the expertise that you're sharing. So a lot of times people may ask, well, Sean, why do you charge the price that you charge for coaching? Uh, is that what you charge for the hour? No, it's, it's what I charge for the years. So you're not paying for how much time I share with you is what I'm imparting with you, the knowledge that you're getting. So if I can take 27 years of successful entrepreneurship and condense it down into 30 minutes, that's what you're paying for. You're paying for the transfer of my wealth and my knowledge. Uh, you're paying for speed. When I invest in mentorship, uh, that's one of the things one of my mentors taught me. He said, man, you're, you're investing in speed. 
because if you can knock off someone else's mistakes, uh, the length of time that it takes to learn, uh, the learning curve of something, that's what you're paying for. So that you can enjoy time with your family, you can enjoy time to sit outside and drink some hot chocolate uh, on a Thursday morning. So, if you are in a position where you're looking to get more time, money, freedom, let's, let's connect. Connect with me and uh, I can share with you what Generational Wealth Academy can afford for you. Because again, I always say two of my best students are Kennedy and Kaden, and if I can teach seven-year-olds, because that's when I started the company, we're both seven-year-olds, when I started the companies and I run six-figure companies, if I can teach seven-year-olds how to do that, surely I can teach adults how to do it as well. So guys, have a productive Thursday. Um, we are ending the month of June, which puts us at the beginning of Q3 uh, on the 3rd. I think that's coming up in a couple days here. So uh, we're at the halfway point. It's half, well, it's half time of the year. So we only have six months left to achieve the 2022 goals. So time is running out. Let's go.